Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Conversations in Pop Culture. I have the one called Manders with me, who's a <laughs> professional wrestler. And I've wanted to do this for a while because you always retweet. Every time I tweet at you, you always retweet my stuff, and you've been doing it for years. So, oh, welcome. Man. Yeah, man. Much appreciated. I mean, you. Yeah, you're great. So, I mean, why not? Somebody that's supportive, you know, for the brand and, you know, for your dreams and stuff. So. Yeah, no. I, you know? I, I'm, I'm actually super excited to have you on because you've been tearing it up in the Midwest. And we live in very interesting times. And yeah. you're kind of what I like to call the soul of America to some degree. Oh, and what damn. you yeah, represent. And I couldn't even think of a better guest on Memorial Day to do. So, <laughs> yeah. And, and that's kind of where I want. Yeah, yeah, please. So, so I couldn't think of a better guest, and one of the things that I want to talk about is the Midwest, because the Midwest, to me, with wrestling, is the hot spot, and very much we see it where some of the best professional wrestlers have come out of the Midwest, yeah. and so I'm curious as that is and why, and just to name a few names, you know, Kurt Stallion, who we wrestled, Dante Leon, Aaron Williams... Sammy Callahan, Dave Chris, Warhorse, and all those guys. So I'm really curious, what is it about the Midwest that creates some of the best wrestlers ever? I don't know. I guess it's something in the water, and it must be all the corn, I guess, to make it make it good. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It could be, it could be a lot of it. You know, just the Midwest is very blue collar and. Uh, we work hard and stuff like that. So guys like Warhorse, guys like Kurt, and um, I mean, list goes on, right? There's so many guys. I mean, like we could go, we could go up to you know, guys like CM Punk and guys like Chris Hero and guys like uh, Cole Cabana and Ace Steel, right? All those guys are Midwest guys, and I think that's just, it's just the mold, right? I just think it's 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 probably because being from the heartland, you know. Is the weather always great? Not really. And, you know, working hard and being that blue collar kind of like just family and mentality. So I think a lot of it has to do with that for sure. And to even add further out onto that, we look at the rivalries that come out of the Midwest and Rockstar Pro Wrestling has been a lot of those with you. And I go through Larry yeah. T and even pretty much most of Ohio is for killers as you've wrestled yeah. people like Dave Chris over and over again, and I think Ron Mattis and Sam, Sammy Callahan and those guys. And what what is it like to be up against those guys? Because you're still relatively new, and those guys have done the loop around you for at least a good eight or nine years. And so yeah. what's that like and really getting that in there and just having that experience? And I would imagine it's such a learning experience as well. It was. It kind of, it kind of what made me to be, you know, like the Cornbell Cowboy. Because when I, because when I was doing Rockstar and stuff, I was, I was there when it was like, at the tail end of its peak. So when we were at the old building and, uh, we were, dude, we were, some of the cards and stuff. Like if you think about it, were insane, right? Because like, you could get you know six bucks on a, on a Wednesday night in Dayton, Ohio, like with guys like Zachary Wentz, Trey Miguel. Uh, Desmond Xavier, then you had Ron Mathis, then you had, then you had, you can have any of the OBE guys, Sammy, Jake, and Dave, and then we get dudes coming in from left and right. Like we'd have one week be Pat Monix, one week would be, um, like basically everybody, everybody on the Indies in the Midwest has been a rock star at least once. So it's just crazy, right? You got all these like, you know, these ring vets and these guys, and like it's just so much wrestling and. I remember living in living in Iowa City and like wanting to move in Dayton for a little bit, and I did that for ten months. So when I when I did that, you know, it was every Wednesday, man, for ten months, and that's probably why I got better in the ring because I was always wrestling. And we used to always do the sloop. We would do we would do Wednesdays would be Rockstar, Thursdays would be IW Mid South, and. You know, in, in IWA, you have guys like Mance Warner and Larry D. And, I mean, Larry D. came to Rockstar, too. That's another guy. It's just 
so many dudes. It was, it was definitely, it was definitely, um, it was definitely awesome to have, but also intimidating to have because at the time, you know, you, you know, you you moved, you, you know, you moved away and you're trying to find yourself and all that good stuff. And I think it worked out. Yeah, and to talk about that because you've had wars with Larry D, and you've had some. Yeah crazy matches and Larry D's a very big guy you know he's got hands and he's got a wicked right hand and yeah. his his hands and forearms are like like chicken thighs man it's freaking crazy they're so they're so it's just it's insane yeah Larry's one of those guys um you wouldn't think he could go maybe just cause of like his look and stuff but dude Larry Larry can go for days and um when I was when I was more of the Hawkeye and and not because re- I don't I didn't wrestle him when I was the Corn Belt Cowboy, and uh, when I when I wrestled him as the Hawkeye, it was like okay and in my mind I wanted you know I wanted to do it when I was being the Corn Belt Cowboy and I got to do it at Revolver uh, at the Valentine's Day Massacre, so that was pretty cool just to like you know. Not redemption, but just like, hey, maybe you come a long way and you want to show, you know, somebody who you respect, like Larry D, to wrestle. And that was an, that was another thing too. So Larry, Larry used to wrestle. I mean, Larry has a wrestling promotion in Lexington, uh, Primetime Wrestling. So, God, man, it's like for ten months, like for basically a year, the loop was like, you know, Wednesdays, uh, Rockstar Pro. Thursdays had to be Mid South. Uh, Fridays. You know, it could be AAW, it could be, you know, it could be wherever, wherever you want. Saturday could be the same thing. Or sometimes it'd be IW Mid-South when we were at the trading post. And then Sundays would be Larry D's. It was like you could literally wrestle any day of the week almost. And it was it was awesome to have, for sure. And to, good times. And, and, and to even talk about that Valentine's Day Massacre show, that redemption factor, what is that like? Knowing that, you know, two years later and that now that you've grown so much because, you know, yeah. 2017, I think you came to the business. 2018, you were starting to gain steam. And then in 2019 was your breakout year. And 2020 was going to be continuation of that. But what was that like in many ways to say, hey, you know, this is how much I've grown? Because if we look at 2018 yeah. and 2019 with your career, it is legitly night and day. Yeah, totally. Um, I think like so, like with 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 the with the twenty eighteen and twenty nineteen, right? And and we were jumping into twenty twenty, and just like just just like doing like doing the stuff, like you know what I mean by that. I mean by like you know doing uncharted territory and doing GCW and 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 doing AIW and like all these places, right? Doing the you know, sup and everything and kind of like being more around, I guess. So like with that, um, when I got to come back and wrestle Larry D, you know, at the same time, you know, Larry was revolver champion. Uh, Larry just got signed to impact. So it was, it was kind of like, yeah, like, you know, yeah, you've been, you've been doing it right. You've been hitting the circuit, but it's like, you know, Larry's just, you know, Larry's getting better too. So it's like, in my mind, I was like, well, let's bring it. Let's see what you got. Like, this is what you wanted. You better put your money where your mouth is and let's go. So that, that was that was like my mindset for Larry and and I think I think I think we did all right <laughs> for the match. I think we did all right. Uh, he liked it. I liked it. The crowd seemed to like it. So uh, it was fun. It was it was a good match and it was an enjoyable match to watch. And I love Larry D. You know, I just came into Larry D. Maybe two years ago and I watched some of his. Kind of when he kind of got hot, to be honest. Even though even though Larry's been wrestling for, you know, uh, I'm probably wrong on this, but at least 15 years, uh, it's probably more. It's probably like 17 or 18 or something. But yeah, Larry like, yeah, Larry got hot. Larry got hot when I like when I was like starting, um, and it's just awesome to see. And because because also too like in wrestling, right? Like, of course you get like good wrestlers and stuff, but like you want you want kind of the guys that are nice guys to succeed as well. And Larry's one of those, so. 
Yeah, pretty cool. Larry got hot, and I think Larry got a lot of respect when he was in the feud with Jeremy Wyatt. And oh God, yeah, and that those, those anarchies, anarchies, the anarchy shows. Yeah, and that was yeah. great. And there was like two or three matches between the two of them, and under you know the Heritage Championship rules, and yeah. crowd was massively behind Larry. And I think that's when he got really hot. I I love those. I love those venues. Uh, the the Spalding Hall. That's one of the coolest venues ever. To be honest, I think in my opinion, and I don't know why. Maybe it's because. So, like, for me, like, Alton, Illinois is kind of like, you know, like Moline and Davenport and the Quad Cities because it's on the Mississippi and it's St. Louis, which is only like three hours. And um, just the vibe in the room is pretty cool. All right. I mean, like, it's not the greatest venue with, like, the ceiling and stuff and you not being able to do some cool moves. But that, that is what it is. But, you know, just the I think the setting with the pizza and all that stuff, it's pretty cool, I think. So, I, yeah, I, 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 lo- I like Anarchy a lot. I think Anarchy, and I think what they do and who they have wrestling there is some of the best. I mean, there's a reason why there's the four pillars. You know, you have War Horse, you have Gary yeah, Day. Yeah, that's, cool, that's a cool story. And then you got the besties, and then you could throw Kurt Stallion and even Tom and Shire into that as kind of maybe the next yeah, Shire. And so just as a wrestling group and just those six guys are amazing and you've had a few matches with gary J, and gary J is a hard hitting uh, you know i don't think i've ever had a match with gary J. I was supposed to have matches with gary J, and never happened well, well well he's a hard hitting won't go down. yeah no no don't be wrong i've seen gary i've seen plenty of gary J matches but yeah that's that's a guy that i've like i keep missing we keep missing each other and oh uh, it was it was gonna happen at, at mania weekend but it, and it was going to bring the roof down because yeah. the two yeah. going at it. it I mean, it broke. especially it broke. the way you've grown it is unbelievable. Where two years ago, I don't know if you were ready for that match. And I think now going into yeah, it at, not. at WrestleMania, you would have been ready and it would have been an amazing match. And I think certain people have prepared you for that match. You know, talking about Absolutely. IW Mid-South, you know, Calvin Tankerman. Tankman, yeah. that guy, and you two. Another guy. Big guy, strong guy, real massive fights right there. Um, and that's kind of the that's kind of the the one thing I've noticed about pro wrestling is like with the people with people is, um, and it might be even it goes bigger than wrestling. It's probably just a world thing. Um, everybody's so worried about the destination of where you want to go, right? Everybody's like, oh, I want to get signed or. Oh, I want a car, or oh, I want this, and like, and it's it's super easy like to fall into that, and I I've totally done it before, right? I totally I do it all the time, um, but uh, it's all about it's a journey, man. It's like it's what you do, right? Like, like just enjoy the process, because that's what that's how you get better, right? That's how you get that's how you appreciate things more and all that good stuff. So. So yeah, like that's a guy, man. Tankman, like, um, you talk about a dude that he's been doing it for a while, right? He's still young though, but he's been doing it for a while, and um, super talented for how big he is. Super talented. I like some of the stuff he does. Like I've seen him do, it blows my mind because it's like, how is this big? big refrigerator able to do all this and 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 he hits hard and because it's kind of that's also another thing so if we're talking about midwest right um i think the style's a little different than like other places right i think the midwest is more hard hitting i think i don't know i could be wrong yeah i I, I I agree there's more i mean yeah like like in wrestling right you have styles and stuff and i think i think the midwest has like a like a hard hitting like affair, and 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 I remember like wrestling right because there's an art form to it, and like I remember when I first started and stuff, you see stuff at IW Mid South, you see that kind of stuff, and you see guys like Tankman right that would that would bring it, and uh, I remember I had one match, it was with AJ Gray. It was like this was this was before we were second years, before we were boys. Um, actually, actually, uh, AJ didn't like me at all. This is a funny story. He didn't like me at all. 
uh, when I when I first met him. Um, but we wrestled, right? And we had this like uh, strike exchange, and uh, I kind of I kind of you know gave some peppers, <laughs> I, I, maybe a little unsafe, and uh, and and I just remember after the show, like just Ian Rodden uh, telling me like showing me the art form of it and he was making fun of Tyler Black saying, you know, you know, Tyler, you know, you know, Tyler wasn't very good at a uh, strike. So that's probably why you're not good at him either. Uh, <laughs> thought that was funny. And, uh, but yeah, just like, but just like those experiences. Right. And then like, you've seen that mold of style and I think wrestling tankman for sure, like brought like the, Hey, if you're, if you're going to do exchanges like that and chops and et cetera, and if you're going to bring it like that and, and be safe, this is how you do it. So having that for sure helped too. Yeah, and even to talk about the style of the Midwest because we see two styles somewhat in the Midwest. Where we see that hard hitting style, and we also see, you know, the the style where that that it's it's a little bit stiffer, it's more rigid. You definitely hear yeah. the cops. You know, mm-hmm. when, when we go look at a beyond, and, and in the Northeast and the North. You know, we don't hear the chops as loud. That doesn't mean that they don't, right. every once in a while, you know, you see more, I guess, fluidity in, in, in the Yeah, beat. I totally, th- I totally agree with that. And, um, and like, yeah, no, that's, that's totally accurate. That's totally accurate. And then the South, you see more of, um, it's a more slower style, um, and that's, I mean, I mean, of course there's exceptions to the rule, right? Like. I mean, like look at Chris Dickinson, right? Chris Dickinson from the Northeast, and I mean, he kind of does both, to be honest. He 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 brings that you know hard hitting style, but he's also extremely fluid. Yeah, Dickinson is amazing, and that and that's a guy that that's another guy, right? So like, talk about experiences, right? Like, one of the things I learned when I when I was in Dayton was like, um, I guess you could call it young boy stuff. I don't know. I guess I, I don't like calling it that, but or paying dues in the business or whatever. Um, I always like, cause, cause, cause like, you know, when you're in Ohio, right? Like, in, you know, hanging out with Sammy and, and you know, and Dave and Jake, um, you get a lot of the impact guys. Right. So, you know, a lot of times I was basically like a roadie for, you know, OBE and, uh, like doing that. So you get, you know, knowledge from those guys. And then you also get knowledge from, you know, and for example, uh, my first ever pickup from an airport for Sammy was Dan Moff. Right. And like uh, I picked up Dan Moth and same as like, hey, could you pick him up and then, you know, take him to the airport and like stuff like that. And like and me doing that. Right. Like uh, got to know Dan Moth. So then like, you know, down the road, I saw Dan Moth at a Black Label show and then saw Dan Moth at the GCW show. And, you know, Dan Moth here, Dan Moth there. And like, you know, and, and Dan Moth took care of me. Right. Like, he like he, he he bought my Waffle House breakfast and. You know stuff like that, and like you know, you just meet guys, and um, I don't know where I was going with this. So, so, so <laughs> just just to go off of that, you know, Bryce Remsenberg has a story about the Young Bucks about picking them up eighteen years ago. That kind of led him to get a job in AEW as a ref, and, and that yeah. story is not a secret. So, how important is it to when you're first starting out? whether you're trying to break into the business or you've been, you're still in the I think business. It's, I think it's super important. Cause like everybody thinks like, and this is kind of how I feel like life works, right? Like it's not just, so for wrestling, it, it's not just, okay, how good are you in the ring? Right? Like, yeah, like you can, you can be the best, but if you're an asshole in the back, like how far is that going to get you? You know? So like, um, yeah, like you got to be, you got to be good in the ring. You got to be good on the mic. You got to be friendly. You got to be cordial with people. You got to know how to talk to people. You got to, and that doesn't mean like being a politicker. It's just like, I, like as simple as this. Like my mom used to always teach me this, and I kind of try to be this way. Is um, you know treat others how you want to be treated, and if you follow that rule, it's kind of simple, right? So, um, yeah, no, that's totally a thing, and. and and because, and for like, and because of Bryce doing that, it doesn't mean like okay, just because he did that, he got signed to AEW. It's like yeah, like he he did, but at the same time, like he was also at every single major wrestling promotion as a referee, and he was also a 
goddamn good referee. Like him refing uh, Invisible Man versus Invisible Stan was absolutely insane. He made that match, right? Yeah. And that's the, that's the thing too. Like referees make make the third component of the match. So, you know, kudos to him, man. I mean, and, and also, you know, other people, and I was in a seminar with him, and he said, you know, there's plenty of guys in the back who treat referees like shit. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, and, that, and that's, that's the thing. That's the thing. They, they don't understand that, look, the ref is your friend. And when, when yeah, I tell I, this. I, I don't get it. I never understood yeah. that. And when I tell I this story with Bryce, you know, he didn't just get the job because he picked up the Young Bucks, but it definitely helped. With sure. that, and it made an introduction, totally made a good impression, and then also yeah. Bryce is a fantastic referee. And you I don't like know that goes far, right? It's kind of like, it's kind of like if you had a job interview, right? And, um, you know, you you had this old job, right? You don't you don't like it, you don't want to do it anymore, and you want to move on to the next one. You don't try to burn that bridge. You just you just try to be upfront about it, and you you know you don't you don't, you don't be a dick because you don't you never know. Five years down the road, you might. He might come back to that, and they they might you know they might say no nah, fuck you because you were this or whatever. So that's how the old promotions I, used to run. It used to run yeah. back in the day that 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 right. You'd spend nine months, and then you'd be like fuck you, and then the promoter would be like fuck you back, and then you go and you work six months in another promotion, and then all of a sudden what would happen is that then the promoter would be like oh man I need you back here. It's like we curse each other off. I don't remember us cursing each other off. And then that's how it used to work. And yeah. I don't know, obviously the indie scene, and just to talk a little bit about that, it's not like that anymore, and it's not like the old promotion, where the indie scene no. is very much more connected now. And yeah. five years ago, it wasn't even as connected as it is right now. I would, I would, I would thank IWTV for that, to be honest. Yeah, they, they've think, definitely right? done a lot of work in fostering and connecting and making it feasible for talent. That's how it should be, I think. Don't you? Yeah, I mean, I think that that, that at least on the East Coast, somewhat in, in the territories, I think it, it should be interconnected because it's, it's, it's harder, I guess, for a talent who's in the Midwest to be booked on a bunch of Cali shows because it, it's difficult to travel. And, and I understand right. that, but but especially like on the Northeast, when you have like Battle Club Pro and you have Beyond, and then you have well, the North, Northeast has. Uh, so like you were you were saying earlier that the Midwest is uh it's kind of like a hotbed, and, and I'm not saying it isn't, but um, I I think this is this, this is my opinion. I think the Northeast is kind of where it's at, and I don't know if it's because the couple times I've been up there and done the loops, and I'm just sitting here like, damn, I guess where the hotbed is because. That's the one thing about the Midwest, right, is, like, uh, you kind of drive kind of far, right, because the states are a lot bigger. Um, the Northeast, they're kind of smaller, and there's more shows out there. So that might – just some take on that. I think the Northeast might be a little better. Maybe. I just, I, I just I like know it. I mean, I like them all, right? Like, you got to yeah. – if you want to be a good wrestler, you got to go everywhere, I think. I, I, and I learned that from – from all the guys and, 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 and the guy that really like it, like clicked in my brain with it was Kurt. Cause Kurt would go everywhere. Cause he's batshit crazy. And I was like, well, damn, if I do all this, maybe this will happen. And that's kind of how I thought I just started. Just, I started just showing up everywhere. I didn't give a crap. I didn't care if I got booked. I didn't care if I lost money. Like just cause, cause I wanted to, was I wanted to be there, and I had nothing else better to do, and this is what I like, and this is what I want to achieve. So, so Kurt, Kurt was Kurt was the guy for that for sure for me. And and there's there's a few guys like that right now. You know, Warhorse is very much like that, or Warhorse totally like that. I mean, he's he, all he's over the hooligans, right? So like, I mean, they'd go everywhere, literally. Like I remember he told me a loop one time. Uh, this I think this is when, when before we wrestled up beyond. Uh, he was like one time I you know I drove from St. Louis to to Arizona. And I was like what? <laughs> like it was like this insane loop and and that and that's a guy too right because like he kind of he kind of did. I mean I, I feel, I, there might be a formula I don't know but like I mean I feel like I feel like you know you got to see a bunch of stuff and do a bunch of things before you get to where you want to go. 
And that's kind of let me look at wars, right? He was, he was Jake Parnell, you know, the, um, you know, with the, with the hooligan stable. And then, you know, I think the match with Gary where he ripped his mouth kind of helped him and built some steam. And they had this, they had this great story and this great feud. And then he's molded into, you know, the war horse. So, and, and him and Gary are still going. It's not over. And, yeah, right. And I don't think it'll, it's kind of like um, it's kind of like Sammy, Sammy Zayn, and Kevin Owens. Like I don't think it will ever, I don't think it will ever end. Yeah, it's know? it's just one of those things where 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 those two will always go at it. And yeah, whether they like each other or they don't, which is up for debate. And Gary's not a big <laughs> fan. He said it right on my podcast twice, might I add. But apparently they just know how to work well together and they know how to put on these amazing matches. They do. They really do. And there, there's a reason. And in many ways, both of them have made St. Louis Anarchy what it is. And they've made that a yeah. stable. And no, totally. I, I mean, look look at, what was it, 2019, the collection or the collective? I mean, that match. Yeah, the, the where, WrestleMania. Yeah. The match where we're there. There's nobody in the crowd. And then. I was we, there. Yeah, I remember. I watched it. Nobody was was, was, was was in the crowd, and I I could have gone for free and I should have, because because <laughs> you should have. I, I it was in Jersey and I was in New York and and I should have gone and yeah it was it was at the it was at the White Eagle Hall and and and, and I think I it was like too by the way IWTV gave me a free ticket because I was like a, a season like year pass holder and I should have yeah. gone and just to tell about that match Warhorse put the ring hook in Gary's mouth. Like yeah. Gary did, and it was a very nice full circle moment to that entire story. And yeah, that match that match was sweet. They did this like crazy spot on the outside, I think, with like these. It was like a, I don't know if it was a double stomp or something, but they did something with the chairs, and it was gross. I have, I probably probably gonna watch it back now. I need to watch that back. That's yeah. good. It, it's it's a crazy match, and. That's a style that I don't necessarily see so much in the Northeast. Like, I don't even know. That. Yeah, that's what we were talking about, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't even see it in, like, ICW. I mean, ICW is starting to now change where, like, they don't even have ring ropes anywhere. They're using chains as ropes. And, and, and you know, it's, Which it's, I think it's cool. It's cool, but it's also, to me, I want that reserved to some degree for, like, specialty matches where... It, yeah. it, it gets tricky because, you know, I, I get that ICW doesn't run every week. And if they ran every week, it would get old really quickly. Oh, but, yeah. But at the same time, it's like, now how do we make this match more extreme? And that that's my thing. Like, when Gary and Warhorse go, and you even when you wrestle in crazy matches like this, because you were in almost like a match that involved some hay, and it was almost like a barn-type match and street fight. <laughs> yeah. And and yeah. so like that to me was special, and right because it was like a build story, yeah. And there's a lot of stuff going on in that match, and so like that that's my thing about. But we don't really see those insane positions, so that's right. that's how I feel about you know some some of this stuff. Um. Well, it's kind of it, it's like you said, right? It is tricky because. Uh, that's kind of the style with them because, like, they're kind of like a so. I mean, they're not associated, but they're kind of similar with GCW, right? So, like, they're just trying. They're just trying to find their um, their style, I guess, would be the way. I don't know. But I feel with GCW, GCW has found their style. They have found oh, totally. They have found exactly what works, and then they experiment too. I mean, look at what Mania Always. Weekend was supposed to be like. They were supposed to have Effie's Big Gay Brunch. Yeah, that was wild. And and so when, when in a million years, I would have never expected GCW to put on a gay show. Ever. Yeah, right. And, yeah. and, and, and I, mean, I mean, I would imagine that even with Joey Janela's Spring Break, you know, putting on that stuff is also wild. Yeah. Everything that's going on. And so... That, that, to me, is very interesting. Then GCW is massively expanding at the same time. They, they are. were just in Cali. They've been to Japan. 
I don't know. We were, we were we were supposed to be in Vegas uh, for this weekend because the whole double or nothing. So that would have been cool. And and, yeah, was, and yeah, I was supposed to do that for like. I was there for three days, I think, and then I was supposed to be in Limitless, Maine, and then yesterday I was supposed to be at Sup. So that would have been a sick loop. Loop. Yeah, let's talk about Sup, so, Southern Underground. Yeah. Because 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 Southern- they, there's two people that I love in, in Sup. And you yeah. might like one of them, and you might not like the other, and I think you know who I'm talking about. So, O'Shea Edwards. Probably do. Love O'Shea. O'Shea, O'Shea. O'Shea yeah. is so good, and and, and he is so Very underrated. Good. He's the primetime uh, heavyweight champion for a reason, primetime wrestling in D.C., yeah. and so and he's a big guy, and he kind yeah, of... He's a, he's a very big guy. And, and he, he, he's a very personable heel, which, which is even better. And yeah. in prime time, and so, what was it like going up against him? Because you're you're a big guy too. <laughs> yeah, he's. Well, the thing, I might be a big guy, but I'm not as tall as uh, as O'Shea. O'Shea is massive. Um, well, it's kind of like Clash of Styles, right? Because we kind of do the same move sets and stuff like that. So, uh, that was something. Um, yeah, man, talk about talk about a guy like O'Shea. I don't think O'Shea's been doing it very long. Yeah, he might be older, but he's he's not. He hasn't been doing it very long. I think it's only been like, like maybe four or five years, if I'm not mistaken. And also, he is very much like you, where 2019, 2020 was his breakout, where yeah. he did not get much attention. He moved down from from where he was, I guess, Midwest, sort of the South area. Yeah, he was from Atlanta, so he. He was kind of to Maryland. Yeah, he moved. He moved for Ring of Honor, and so and so, and you know, it's 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 very interesting. And his kind of big break where he was like, "Oh shit, it's O'Shea Edwards." Was at that okay. collective and collection shows, and people were like, "Oh shit, who's this guy?" And yeah, he did a freaking moonsault. That was insane. And everyone was like, "Oh my god, this is this is ludicrous! Like, how does a man this size do this?" Yeah, and yeah, so that was. That was freaking nuts. Yeah, so wrestling him was cool. Um, and then yeah, and he talked about a guy from Sup that like really. It's kind of like I, I feel like I feel like that's what Sup is. It's like, it's like it's like an, it's the underground of like okay, here's the guys that are gonna be something maybe one day, and like and then like they break out. I think. Yeah, I I agree in which that Sup is very much, sort of saying hey we're gonna experiment and we have. A bunch of people here who yeah. <coughs> know have something special about them and not everybody on that roster is going to break out but a bunch of people are starting a bunch of have for sure and, and and it's definitely something if you haven't seen sup then, then you're clearly missing out on a bunch of stuff and i think a bunch of their stuff and i think they're relatively new also right yeah they haven't been, they haven't been around very long like maybe two three years and so that's something that, that Maybe, you know, yeah. they don't even have that many shows, but every show that I've seen of theirs is amazing. Yeah, they um And it's almost bare bone too, to some degree. Very that's and, kind of like the that's the vibe they they're trying to give. That that it's 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 raw is is a really good way and it feels authentic. It is. Um I remember I remember like hearing about it right because like guys that were there at the time was like kurt stanley because kurt's the first ever sub champion so you had kurt right and then you had aj then you had mance then you had mjf you had alley cat you had brett ice and o'shea edwards um cabana man dan like god I, I think i'm probably missing people i mean obviously kevin coon dom uh so you had all these guys and, and i'm sitting here like like this is the place to be. I mean, because I remember, oh, oh, Marco. Sorry, Marco stunt. Forgot about him. I um, love Marco. That step, yeah, ladder. like that step they ladder. Had, they had this picture, and it was with all of them, right? And there's and there's some more other people too. And I saw the picture, and I'm sitting here. I remember this was like 2018. I'm sitting here, like that's the place I want to be, and I wanted, and I want to go there. And and I think, I think I was talking to Dale and Hales about something. And it was around like November, right? It was like their last show of the year for 2018. And I was like, basically coming. I'm going to help out, right? Because I want to be here. And 
I like helped out and whatever. And and the next year, 2019, it was like your January show. I was in a scramble, and it was like it was. It's, it's when we uh, created the stable with Teddy King. It was Teddy King was the main guy, and then it was me, and then it was uh, Jay Newman, which is where that feud came from. Because we were all going to be in like a Varsity Letterman like gimmick. So, 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 two things. So, when you want to go to a promotion, and it's kind of the place you want to be, how does that all come about and happen? And how do you uh, deal with that? Because clearly, you want it to be in SUP. And, 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 and. Yeah. That, that entire thing, because that's something that I think people don't really know about the indie business, because sometimes you know somebody, sometimes you're requested. Right. And right. then. Other times, you're sort of not, but then things happen in wrestling. People don't show up. You're thrown in at the last minute to some degree. Also, yeah. location, you know, because, I, I, and this is going to, and correct me if I'm wrong, but a promotion in Cali isn't calling you up last minute to be on a show so no. quickly. But, 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 but if you're in the Midwest and IWA needs, you know, somebody and you live in Iowa, you know, they might call you up because you're relatively in the area. So, so how did that all come about and really work and kind of a little bit of the intricacies without giving too much away? Yeah. Um, so people want to know that. No. Yeah. It's kind of, it's kind of like what you said, right? Like there's, a, there, there isn't like a, like a specific way. There's a bunch of ways. So like, I remember like um, when I first started wrestling, uh, and I wanted to wrestle on IWA. Um, I didn't, I don't think I, if I remember correctly, I didn't hit up Ian Rotten. I think like, I think like, like Tyler, like might've heard it. Right. Like me say that. So then like, he like hit up, he hit up Ian and then like Ian hit up me. So it was kind of like that. And then I think like, there's a bunch of like, there's previous like black and brave guys that have been there that like, or, like maybe send my name or two, you know, Ian, Ian's interested in like, I think what helped me a lot too was because you know the Iowa football background, right? So you had that a little bit. So like, there's like a little bit of legit legitimacy. Um, so like in that aspect, like Ian Rodden hit me up and was like, "Hey, you want to come down on a Saturday?" And I just want to see you work. Uh, and then you're like, "Of course, right?" Because you're like, "This is IW Mid South," because you know your trainers did that, right? And it's your so, tryout interview essentially. Yeah, and it, that's kind of what it was. Um, but then, like after that, right? Like, like Iowa, Iowa to, to Memphis, Indiana, or or basically Louisville was like six hours, so it's kind of far. Um, I guess. I mean, I mean, six hours ain't shit to me now, but at the time it, it was. Uh, but then, like you know, because they run so much, and like I had work and stuff like that, so like I couldn't always go every Thursday. That's kind of why I moved to Dayton, right? Because I could wrestle all the time. It's only like two hours, um, but. But then you just like because now you have the connection, right? You can just text Ian and say like, "Hey, can I, uh, you know, wrestle or whatever?" Um, because for for that aspect, it was it was more about the reps. Um, but like other places, right? So like you just I don't know, you just you just like you know, it's kind of word of mouth, and that's kind of like a kind of like a lost art, I feel like in 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 the world. But um, uh, just like to get, to get booked on shows, like. Like for like for me for like to like what I did in 2018 at the like the tail end from probably mid probably like from August all the way to December and and and, and it kept going in January right like it kept in 2019 it kept going like that whole year to like September basically uh, I would just uh, I had this I had this email right where like uh, they would they would send it to you and it would be like every show all across the country basically. Of like well, who's running in the next three months, the next six months? They had it all down, so I would always look at that every week, and I would just like see if I can make it work, and then I would just go, and then I would just help out, and then you know you're they're like who's this big ass cowboy with a mustache, right? And you're like oh he's a Hawkeye football player too, and then, it's, and then it kind of like shit like that, and then you're just I guess that's where the blue collar comes in, where you're just you're putting in the hard work, right? So kind of kind of like kind of that kind of stuff and then you know like if, if you if you wrestle somebody and 
you know, and you do a good job and they like you, like that helps out too. Um, it's kind of, it's just, it's just kind of like an endless like thing. So like for me, for SUP was, uh, I went to that show. I just said, fuck it. I went out on a limb because I was living in Dayton at the time and it wasn't very far. It's like maybe like four or five hours, uh, from Nashville. And I went right and helped set up. And I was kind of like the leader to help set up, which is crazy because I've never been there before. And then uh, they were like, "Yeah, we, you know, we we, we like them." And, and it could be too, right? Like uh, they've seen my stuff at Nova Pro at the time when Nova Pro was the thing, because Dom and Koo used to always go. So there's that too. Um, yeah, kind of like that. So, so let, we, let's let's talk about Nova because because Nova. Uh, uh, is 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 a fucking nightmare that entire thing and how that thing kind of fell in on itself was a train wreck and everybody has a nova disaster story but Ugh. but the wrestling at nova was phenomenal it was great right because like i mean they had some amazing talent from it was kind of mid- like it was kind of like black label and sup mixed together yeah Kind of. And, and and they had some amazing women wrestling too, which was even better. And did, one of their last did, shows yeah. before they sort of imploded was arguably one of the best female wrestling shows in the last two years. Yeah. And and it, it, there's there's a lot of problems with what happened and everything, but yeah, it's it's one of the best because violence is forever, which is Dom and Koo, where we're great in that. You had a variety of other people. You had Capital Vice was there. God, man, you had Tracy Williams. You had a bunch of guys. So many guys. You've seen, I saw Homicide there once. Uh, War Horse used to always go. Gary J used to always go. Grand Bell used to always go. A bunch of people, man. Like They kind of like just grabbed everybody from everywhere and they wanted to go. Because I feel like at the time, like Nova Pro was like, a, like I said, it's kind of like SUP, right? Like It's kind of like the place where like, you know, if you do good here, you could wrestle and beyond. My opinion. Yeah, that's how I, that's how I took it. So so I, so that that that's the, there was clearly they had the talent component of it down. They didn't necessarily have the business side of it down. And, no, not at all. And, and I wasn't even. Yeah, I remember like experiencing like I had some of like the problems, right? But like I never. At the time, I was like you know. It was kind of like oblivious to my head. I wasn't really in the business very, very much. So I can't imagine some of the stuff that I, I mean, I heard some of the stuff, but I can't imagine like living with it because I don't think it would have went very well on his part. But yeah, I don't think it would have went very well. And yeah. but for those who, who have seen the rest of my stuff out there, I just spoke to Lufisto and everything that's going on with CZW. And oh, shit. yeah, I saw that. And and so 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 that was forty minutes of us just talking about that entire incident, breaking it down piece by piece by piece. Uh, it that's was, a, and that's another thing I never worked for CZW, and uh, I've seen some of that I saw some of that stuff on Twitter, and it's just like it just blows my mind. It's the first time in three years I've actually been harassed on Twitter over something. So when I put it up, so so clearly I'm either doing something extremely right or extremely wrong, and I'm leaning more towards the right side here. Yeah, but 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 I digress. But but you 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 know in life that when you're getting harassed on Twitter, you're doing something right to some degree, and you touched upon somebody's nerves if they're coming after you for what you posted up. Uh, but but I digress right there, and now I want to circle back to Jaden Newman. Because the two of you, oh, yeah. and and Jaden, and, and I am a fan of Jaden. He's bomb. He's great. And, and and everything the guy touches is, is fantastic. And I think he's one of those guys that's kind of broken out of salt in many he's, ways. He, he's, get, he's getting there, right? Like, um, you talk about a guy that's like, that like lives and breathes the business. Um, as much as I don't like him, I to, I, and, and that's totally like a – probably why i didn't like him right because i i could see right here right like here's a guy like i obviously love wrestling and obviously live and breathe this this business but you you see it in him right because like he runs his own promotion uh twe and then like he's been what's Shane like 22 i think 
21, 22. So, so, so right? to so break like, down Jaden, I'm going I'm to explain things, and everybody's going to hate Jaden Newman when, when they understand how good he is. He is, from my understanding, a professional electrician. Yeah, yeah he, he has that. He runs his own promotion. He's, yep, he's married. Married. He's got a very attractive wife to, to some degree. You know, you know, yeah. you know, you know, and, and, and he's a hard worker. He gets booked. He started a feud and then and, and hates President Gator from primetime pro wrestling. That's because he has to. It's required in his action contract. But that's a different discussion. And I can say that because I know Gator very well. And Gator knows exactly what I'm referring to. And Gator was on from primetime pro wrestling in D.C. And then on top, on top of that, he's just getting better and better and better. And he is arguably the definition of success. And yeah. I don't really know where he's going as far as being signed to a major promotion. But I don't even know if he wants to. Because right now, he is arguably in one of the best positions on the indie scene. And he gets booked and he gets a lot of stuff taken care of. And so he really is amazing. And also, he knows how to win. He knows how to be effective. And he knows how to put himself in matches or in spots in matches that he shouldn't be in. To make somebody else look good as well and put somebody over. And he's amazing on the mic. It takes one to win one. So, so what was that like? Because clearly, this is very much a high spot for you and the two of you going at it. And I don't want to say it was a big money match, but, but it definitely was an interesting feud. And it was sought after and well watched. Yeah, we kind of we kind of grew a lot from it, right? Like, from the beginning of the year of 2019, right, where we were supposed to be in the stable... And uh, basically, Ted King didn't want to be a wrestler anymore, which is, you know, for whatever reason, you know, life reasons, and that happens. Um, so with that, it just, and, and, and like it was like I was saying earlier, like it kind of, so you have all these things, right, that Jaden has. I'm not saying I don't have any of that stuff either, but when you see that kind of stuff, it kind of makes you, I guess, jealous in a way. So it makes you pissed off. You feel like you're being passed yeah, over. Yeah. So like, in, I know the feeling. Time, like. And with that, right, like, here's, like, this guy that's trying to be a letterman, but, like, here's a legit letterman, right? So it's, like, so I was kind of, like, you know, like, you know, like, what the what the F, right? So so there's a lot of, like, a lot of confrontation there, and then it just blew off. And, like, or not blew off, it blew up. And then it became this thing, and then all of a sudden, I guess, I guess people and, and, after SCI weekend, kind of realized that they don't they don't like Jaden, right? So and then it was more of like it kind of like the script kind of flipped, where I was I was now the babyface and he was he's now the heel, which was the other way around. And yeah, it was it was definitely a flip, flip, and and it was it was a natural flip in which that I don't want I don't want to say because it, 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 it wasn't exactly like this, but it was almost like Becky couldn't be a heel. When Becky flipped back in like 2018 ish, and it, yeah, it was kind of like that. It didn't like work. Bret Hart WrestleMania 13 kind of thing, like a poor man's WrestleMania 13 match. Could it, be that. it wasn't gonna work, and it was clear that you were the the baby face. You know, in many ways, you come out yeah. as the corn belt cowboy, and somewhat. A, Initially, you know, you know, you come out as a heel, but then you see that well, Jaden starts acting kind of like a little bit like an asshole, and yeah, <clears throat> his I don't it, sort of the character is because we're kind of in that age where I want to make that distinction right now with everything that just sort of happened in wrestling, but right. kind of got that assholeness to him, and yeah. then all of a sudden you come out as this southern boy, Midwest boy. And it's like, oh shit! This is a hardworking blue collar guy. Like, how can yeah. I not support the underdog in this totally fight and feud? And then I think I resonated with a lot of people. And I don't know how the crowd was reacting during all this, but I know that Twitter reacted more in that way. Yeah, no, it's kind of the same way. They were kind of the same way. 
what what is that like? Because that that must be such an interesting feeling. Because you start off this feud one way and then it ends up another way. I think it's so fascinating. It's wild, right? Like it. So like we were talking about like being organic and stuff. That's kind of how SUP is. Like like SUP might have a direction, but like, and it's kind of like just in wrestling in general. Like you just kind of got to go with what the fans want, right? I mean, it's just kind of it's kind of like that, I guess, and. It's just like you were saying, right? So, like, it's not like that Jaden, like, meant to be a dick or just mean to be a, a, a jerk, right? Because he's exploiting, like, some of the stuff that, you know, all the great stuff he has in life. It's just, like, sometimes it just rubs people the wrong way, I guess. So, and so when you have that and then you have this guy that's, you know, trying as hard as possible, hitting another highway, another town, all these places, you know, working hard. And I guess people appreciate that. So, so you nailed it on the head. Yeah, and then, and then I now want to back out of SUP, and let's talk about sort of the Northeast stuff, because yeah. there's a few things I want to talk about, and you mentioned GCW, and that saved WrestleMania weekend, the collection, collective, I've got which it is, that company saved that entire thing, because Nova went under, Nova was supposed to come in, and that entire program, actually, if nobody oh, stepped yeah, up, all that. Yeah. It would have been a nightmare in which a, a bunch of just just to give background and you might know more about this and feel free to add. Um, my understanding was that all these promotions sort of chipped in and were were sort of all together saying, "Hey, you know, we're bringing in some talent. Everybody's coming in. Everybody's going to kind of wrestle on each other's shows because when you have thirteen or fourteen shows being held in the same venue, everything becomes cheaper." And totally, yeah. and, and 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 also, it's like if you bring in somebody like Sasuke, um, or Sasuke Demoko, or I can't think of his name, but but or somebody Sekimoto. like Sha- Sekimoto, yeah, thank you, or somebody like Shaza McKenzie from Australia, you know, she's gonna wrestle on six shows. All of those promotions share the cost of bringing yeah. her in and putting her up. Well, it's kind of, it's kind of that unionizing thing, right? Like it's kind of like what IWTV is doing, and and GCW totally sees that, right? So. Um, that's why it's called the collective. We, you know, mm-hmm. we're collecting, gathering together for this one big celebration of WrestleMania. So, and so, absolutely. so GCW comes in and they saved it, and then that gave you a bunch of opportunities. And then fast forward, you're now wrestling in GCW, and you had a bunch of matches. And there's two matches I don't want to talk about. Your match with Matt Tremont, which is oh, wow. crazy. That match was crazy, and and. and Matt Tremont's just a crazy son of a bitch, to put it bluntly. Yeah, no, he is. A bulldozer. And then, and then actually, there's three. Homicide, which you yeah. saw, and Homicide is also crazy, but Homicide is definitely New York, you know, that LAX vibe, you know, house of, you know, hardcore house of glory type stuff. And then Nick Gage, you had him act with. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, and this is all in GCW, and we all know rules don't matter in GCW. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, you're not kidding. Um, I mean, you talk about three dudes that are, like, iconic in the business, right? And especially in that, is, in that hardcore world as, as also. Nick Gage might be the most independent and over wrestler right now because his fan yeah, base Yeah, 100% agree with that. Is, I was just telling crazy. somebody that the other day. Um. It was almost like it was almost like full circle for me, and it, and it made me appreciate even more like wrestling those guys because we talk about like you know driving people and driving places and stuff um, for the for the for the SCI weekend, the the Scenic City Invitational Tournament. Um, uh, Dylan Hales and, and Matt Griffin and, and and Scott and all those guys like the they were asking me to hey could you could you drive. Uh, b-boy and tremont around is that cool and i'm like I don't know. and like me right like i want to i want to learn right so like for me like it's like yeah duh like i'd do that so i so i drove i drove b-boy and and uh and tremont around for the weekend uh which was cool right because i i get to i get to learn from like i mean there's another guy right b-boy like you talk about guys that were kings you know for czw forever um and obviously everybody knows if you're in the independent scene, like CZW at the time was like, it's kind of what GCW is now, but, um, 
but like just learning from that, right? Learning from those two guys, and and then uh, when the opportunity came for me to wrestle in a singles match at GCW, um, I guess the backstory is is uh, uh, Brett, the promoter, Brett Lauderdale asked Tremont like. Uh, on this paper, on this sheet, who would you want to wrestle? And I was one of the names. And Trim, I was like, I want to wrestle Manders. So that it, it's kind of cool, right? Like, you know, <laughs> a guy like that, like, wants to wrestle you. And then, like, and I also heard it was kind of the same way with Homicide. And then, obviously, I heard the same thing with Gage. And, and I drove, I drove, uh, it was that two-cup stuff weekend, right, um, for, for Black Label and GCW. And then it was also AEW, the all-in and stuff. Um that's in Chicago. So it was like, it's like two hours away from me. So, um, I was talking to Gage. I don't know when, um, I met Gage at IW mid South and he took a liking to me because I, I, some people probably know this, like Gage is a huge sports nut. So like he, he liked that. I was a Hawkeye, I guess. And then, uh, with that, um, I picked him, I picked him in homicide up at the airport and then kind of just drove them around, did the kind of the same thing. So, like, having, you know, three dudes that were, you know, they're iconic in the business and the hardcore scene and independent wrestling um, for GCW and stuff, like, to have to wrestle those guys and, because they want to wrestle you. That's super cool. Yeah, sure. no, I, I agree. It's, it's, it's amazing. And 